He's chief data scientist at Nanos Research. He tracks consumer confidence closely. And Nick, we were already wondering about the economic road ahead for Canada. What, what do you make of the messaging out of Ottawa so far? Well, I think uh, Ottawa is trying to, uh, what is it, British, keep calm and carry on. But this couldn't happen at a worse time, John, because, you know, when we look at the Bloomberg Nanos tracking, it's been underwater since last June of 2022 in terms of being negative. It was just starting to trend positively, still in negative territory, just starting to trend positively in the last four weeks. And the last thing it needs is any type of uncertainty, because to your point, you know, Canadians would be worried about a potential contagion effect. Now, the good news is, is that SVB is in a different kind, different type of bank than, than Canada's major banks. But it still is not good in terms of confidence and potential anxiety that Canadians might have. And then you have these other stories. I'm going to put them together, interest rates and inflation. Uh, I referenced the fact that we just learned the budget official date. And, you know, it felt like because the fight against inflation is not done, that the messaging from the finance minister was that there would be some fiscal prudence um, what happens if this situation is hard to contain, becomes more of a global story at a time when uh, many Canadians are, are frustrated by inflation already and we're working for, looking for some signs that we would see a cool down in prices? Yeah, it's not going to be good because the, the fact of the matter is, is that most Canadians are already kind of tightening the buckle, the belt buckle, so to speak, on their finances. And, you know, right now it looks like the, the federal government is going to be staying the course, which means that Canadians will have to weather whatever's on the agenda. You know, the, the reality is, is that, you know, there's still a significant amount of anxiety. Canadians are still struggling to pay the rent. Many Canadians are still struggling even just to pay for the groceries and, and to put food on the table. And uh, it looks like there won't be a much new things from the federal government to help them out. So uh, so it's kind of like a bit of a roller coaster ride, John. It's like a white knuckle. Canadians are going to wait to see what happens out of the SVB and hope that nothing else uh, kind of precipitates out of that globally. And then uh, and then they're going to wait to see what happens on interest rates because, uh, you know, for many Canadians, that's a big uh, that's a big factor in uh, in the cost of living. Let's dig deeper into that one as well. I've noticed even just in the in the markets today a bit of up and down and all around because on the one hand, you know you you, you hear about contagion fears and that doesn't really sit well with investors. But if it means that we have seen the peak of rates. It's hard to say at this point, but there are certainly some pundits on Wall Street who are suggesting that. And even just looking at the markets, we've gone from a period where we weren't sure we, we would be ready for a uh, all-in pivot on rates in this country this year. Now the market is starting to price in the possibility of some rate cuts by the end of the year. So I, I imagine there's a potential scenario here where if we avoid a worst-case scenario, you mentioned maybe we're talking about a bank with some very specific attributes that doesn't lead to uh, some you know worries in other parts of the banking sector, that lower interest rates would ultimately be some welcome news to Canadians. Well, it would be welcome news, but the reality is, Tom, is that there's not going to be a recovery without some type of price, mm -hmm. right? Like, say, for example, unemployment's going to have to go up because there has to be a readjustment, you know, in our economy to kind of uh, deal with uh, the rising cost of living. So although people are hopeful that interest rates are going to go down, but I, I don't really see any major indicators to suggest that. I think right now, even before the SVB announcement and uh, situation, what we were looking at, it was a very tepid 2023 that would still be marginally negative, And we wouldn't really be out of the woods on interest rates or fear about inflation.